A couple of years ago, I reviewed this JL Laser 1.6 watt, 450 nanometer blue laser pointer, and it excelled at smaller tasks like popping balloons and causing cardboard to smolder. This was the old. Here is the new. This is a 7 watt version. It has a lot more in store. Today we're looking at the bigger brother, the 7 watt Titan Service by JL Laser. It's also 445 nanometers and it can do quite a bit. Thanks to JL Laser for sending this one to me to look at and make a video about. I appreciate how flexible they've been with how long it's taken me to do this review. Before we get into the review, we need to talk about laser safety. This is a class 4 laser, and that is powerful enough to damage your eyes and the eyes of others, as well as burn skin, ignite materials, and generally just do damage. This isn't a toy, and make sure you're using appropriately laid safety goggles. These are the ones I used in the previous video, talking with JL Laser. These were also good fit here. I'm not going to link to them. I'm not going to recommend any. That's up for you to do the research on. I will link to JL Laser's website and has a good safety page on them. A good rule of thumb with laser safety is kind of treat it like a firearm. In that regards, don't point at anything you're gonna, you don't want to put in danger. Always point it in a safe direction. Things of that nature. <sighs> Easy. Once you got the aim right, lit almost instantly. The host here is one all flashaholics should know. It's the Convoy M21A. This is larger than the C8, really in the battery tube, because it fits a 21700 battery. And that's what's in here for this laser as well. Does not come with a battery. I'm using this uh, Moshi Cell battery that's popular in the flashlight world. You do want to use a high drain battery. It is a flat top and works well. You can see the tail comes off. You've got a nice heavy spring in there. The body section does come off as well. And you've got the laser and laser driver in there. Um, this is loose and it does actually untwist pretty easily. So you can kind of take a look at it. You could make modifications if you wanted to. That's not something I'm gonna do today or ever because I think it's a pretty good as is, but it's an option for you. Silver to silver, you want that to be down. So it makes good contact. There is no reverse polarity on this laser. So keep that in mind, but there's a sticker here to help you remember that to see the polarity. It is your simple clicky switch here. Nothing on the host is really modified. Up at the front, you don't have a conventional lens for a flashlight. It's all replaced with a big machined aluminum insert there that's screwed in from the inside. You do have a plastic lens here that is turns and is focusable. Um, these will melt, so don't have the laser too close to something and turn it on because it will reflect energy back into the lens and melt it. Ask me how I know. I did that on the small one. Certainly not gonna do it on this big one. One note, when it is on, um, and if you're trying to get your fingers in there to adjust it, my fingers don't fit there. I have too much overhanging and you can't do it while the light is on, otherwise you uh, singe the tips of your fingers. So um, it does get hot and you do have to be careful. No specific laser, laser module is mentioned here. It doesn't have a rated duty cycle, but it does get warm. JL Lasers gives a pretty generic recommendation here of letting the cool, the light laser cool when it gets hot before the next use. And I did notice a drop in power output when it was hot and when the battery started to decline as well. Um, quantifying these is hard as I don't really have equipment to do that, but I can say visually there was no difference, but when I was trying to singe wood or uh, burn a box or something like that, you could tell when there was just less power coming out of it as things got too hot. And that was a cue for me to let it cool off and try again later. The laser beam itself is a blue purple color. It's more of a rectangular shape and not very round. Um, let me put on my laser glasses and kind of show you, or see if it does show you. And I gotta keep this moving because I don't wanna burn the table here. But you can see it is pretty square. If I unscrew the laser module or, or unfocus it, it's easier to see there. So there you can see on the camera, and that's not too much power, although it's I can visibly feel it on my hand that it's warm. So keep it moving. If you kept it in the same place, I think it would be too much power and you'd likely uh, burn your fingers. But uh, this, obviously, this focuses out differently. We can see as I move the light up higher above my head, it gets bigger. As I get it smaller, it gets smaller. And yeah, I think I just 
burned my table slightly there. So you can see this thing is powerful. It doesn't take much. Again, <laughs> I have to keep saying that. Tonight we're going to look at some leap lights and lasers. So I've got this Lumen Top Leap here that we'll look at an upcoming video. Tint there is showing bluer than what it really is, but you can see this reaches out and touches the distance pretty well. If you've noticed from old videos, the trees have definitely grown this year a lot. This is a traditional flashlight beam thrower. Here I've got the JL Laser 1.5 watt 450 nanometer laser that I tested last year and still looks great. Nice beam here. I don't have it focused. I have it focused more close up so the beam you're seeing out at the distance is a little bit bigger than probably what you'd have it set to. On the left is the 7 watt JL laser and side by side they're pretty similar looking to the naked eye. The one on the left is definitely brighter. Uh, they're focused similar, have a different similar sized beam. The larger 7 watt version here is definitely stronger. I'm getting some more reflection. That's why safety is so important for sure. You can see that on the camera. And I'm shining on a building that's several hundred yards away that you can see there and I'm getting reflection. So that's why safety is just so important here. This is why pointing out at the stars is pretty cool with this thing just because it is so powerful. As I mentioned, the battery requirements on this light is a 21700 unprotected flat top. It's capable of at least nine amp hour or nine amp continuous draw. And that shouldn't really be a big deal for most 21700 batteries on the market, uh, but it's worth making sure you have the correct battery so you have the most output and performance that the laser is capable of. And again, polarity does matter. The uh, MC PCB, as I showed there, isn't retained within the head section and relies on the body tube to press it into place. I had no issues there, but I would recommend you change the battery from the tail only once you have the head screwed down just uh, to avoid future problems there. So you might be asking, what do you do with a laser like this? And that's a fair question. Um, for me, it's a toy and it's one I don't use inside and I'm really careful with. And here are a few things that I've done with it. Dry leaf here. And it's all about focus, just getting the focus just right. And most things seem to have no problem once you do. Let's try and see what this 7 watt laser can do to the objects in front of me. I, first, I'm going to compare my 1.5 watt laser here, same wavelength, just to kind of see if it can do some similar things. And that's not focused like I want. This is kind of a reflective surface, so it may not even work at all. There we go, it's a little better focus. And it barely touches it. Melts a little bit, but hardly. Not not the best outcome. Let's try it now with the 7 watt to get this focused. Even not focused, you can see it's melting a hole a lot, lot faster. There's a lot more focused beam there. You can see how much faster it's going. So yeah, more power, faster burn. From previous videos, we know that the uh, other laser here will light cardboard or tinge it. You can see the smoke coming up there. It, it takes a little while. Let's show the 7 watt here. And it's so much faster. I'm actually getting flame where the laser's at. And it's charring it nicely. Let's go across the black here. Try the tape. You can hear it poke through and start a fire. Pretty neat looking. If I poke at that with my knife, it, it did clear the first layer of cardboard, but didn't get the corrugations underneath completely or the, the layer underneath that. Let's try this block of wood here with the uh, 1.5. It tinges it a little bit. It'll start smoking. I wouldn't really call that burning though. With the 7 watt, it really just doesn't take any time. I could, I could draw with this one if I was patient enough. A lot more smoke coming off it as well. Definitely do this outside. I've got a stick here. It's dry. Let's see if we can get it to go. And the distance you are away matters too. You gotta get the focus right. And right now I'm about maybe a foot away or so, but I think you could do this longer distances based on some of my other testing I've done. And you can see I've got glowing coals there. So 
you could absolutely light a fire with this if you were patient. Let's take a fresh green leaf off the tree behind me. You might be able to hear it. It just singes it, goes right through. Smells kind of terrible. So easy peasy. One thing I will note here that this is pretty good for stargazing. If you are you have anyone who likes astrophotography or just astronomy in general, you can point this at stars and see it really well up into the sky. Don't point it at any aircraft. That's illegal. But uh, it works great for stargazing. I didn't have any problems with it ruining my night vision or anything like that. It isn't the right color or ideal color for that, but it works as a fantastic pointer. Jim tells me this uh, power level can be used to ignite thermite, but I didn't have any and really didn't uh, want to end up in, on any government list trying to make it. You'll have to try that one on your own. If you do, let me know how it works. Uh, one note here about customer service and website. When I reviewed the uh, previous JL Laser model, one of the things I noted was that he should improve his website and URL. And I'm happy to report that both have greatly improved. He now has a real URL that's jlasers.org and a website that has all the features you've come to expect in 2024. His customer service is fantastic. He's easy to email and get a response from within a day or two. Each laser is hand built in Canada, so expect that to take a little bit depending on the man and he will send you a tracking number so you can watch it come across the border. So my conclusion is that the Titan Service 7 watt laser from JL Lasers is a powerful tool for enthusiasts and professionals alike. It's high performance, sturdy build, and its laser beam makes it a fantastic handheld product. However, with the power of this laser requires extreme caution, and it's essential to follow safety guidelines to prevent accidents. My vision is important to me. I'm taking this seriously. Some might argue too seriously, but again, I don't want to damage my vision just playing with a toy. If you're seeking a reliable, high-powered laser for serious tasks, this one delivers. I think the value here is strong, especially considering these are handmade and any customer services issues you're dealing with, you're dealing with the guy who designed and built them himself. I'm comparing prices online to other similar power level lasers, and this one does better than what I could find. So I think it's a pretty good value too. This laser's ideal for advanced hobbyists, professionals in niche industries or anyone needing a high power laser for very specific tasks. It's not for casual use or for those unfamiliar with the responsibilities that come with this power class of laser. I will have a link to JL Laser's website on where you can pick this up in the description. I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to making more content in the future. Thanks.